Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. Joey Moss of Bad Boy Gaming. We're going to go over the top 15 Mythic cards from Ravnica Allegiance. Now in the base set, there are only 15 Mythic cards. But we do also have Planeswalkers that are in dual decks, which we're not going to discuss. Also, we do have the Buy a Box promo, which we will discuss. So basically, if you go into your local game store and purchase a box, anything you can get, including that little box topper, is going to be included in this video. Let's get into it. Coming in all the way at the bottom. Actually, it's 16. Number 16, Captive Audience. It's a 7-drop enchantment. It's a really fun, unique card. It's definitely going to bring some excitement to EDH. It's only at $2.99. How I got these prices was determined by TCG Player and eBay. Blending the two of them together and finding a medium. Captive Audience enters the battlefield under the control of an opponent of your choice. It is a large 7-drop, though. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one that hasn't been chosen. Your life total becomes 4. Discard your hand. Each opponent creates 5 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. Although I don't see this as going to see a lot of standard play, if it does, maybe a 1-of in some crazy control Rakdos build, if that's a thing, like against creature deck i'm not sure i'm not sure where it's going to find its way but definitely we'll see play in commander i wonder if a card like this would be banned in commander or could be it has potential uh, probably not though but it is a really neat card you pay seven and then your opponent is basically going to pound town very similar to time twister at a much steeper cost for seven it's an instant each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library then draws seven cards Exile Emergency Powers. It's Addendum. If you cast this spell during your main phase, you may put a permanent card with converted mana cost 7 or less from your hand onto the battlefield. Probably like a 1-drop in your uh, white-blue decks. Maybe. I, I really don't know how this is going to fit in. It's just such a high casting cost. And although it is a very cool ability and that you can just drop something... Uh, converted mana cost seven or less from your hand and put it on the battlefield. I'm very skeptical on this one. I just don't know. I think the casting cost is really going to restrict it, especially the price point. It's only at four dollars five cents right now. But it's uh, Big Brother over here, Time Twister from Alpha, in uh, mint condition, is selling for over ten thousand dollars. So yeah, maybe keep an eye on emergency powers. Ravager Worm, four dollars fifty six cents, six drop for them gruel decks. It is a worm with Riot, which Riot, I think, is a really impressive mechanic in Ravnica Allegiance. This, this creature enters the battlefield with your choice of a plus one, plus one counter, or haste. When worm enters the battlefield, choose up to one. It fights target creature you don't control, or destroy target land with an activated ability that isn't a mana ability. Definitely cool for some sideboards. Maybe a one of, possibly two at most, and some gruel builds. That's that's really about it. I like the artwork on this card, too. That, that worm is massive. That's what she said. Rakdos, this showstopper, six drop. Very curious to see what this thing does. Could be a lot of fun in Commander, for sure. It's got flying and trample. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, flip a coin. For each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp, destroy each creature whose coin comes up tails. It's a 6-6. Six, six. So a 6-6 six, six for 6 with Flying and Trample alone is not bad, kind of. When you have Doom Whisperer for 5 and it's a 6-6, six, six, Flying and Trample with Surveil, kind of is. But that whole fun with the, the flip of coin, I mean, you're going to be knocking out your opponent's creatures, essentially. As long as you run this in the right deck, you know, you wouldn't want to run anything other than Devils, Imps, and Demons. Uh, but also it's going to be maybe some fun in a Demon Tribal build, Rakdos style. It's a very impressive finisher, but overall just a fun, fun card. I'm glad they brought back the coin flips. Uh, it's again, $4.69. I probably, can, you could expect this probably to go down, possibly. Mesmerizing Benthid. This card, a lot of people are very unsure of as to where it's all going to fit in. It's $4.85. When it enters the battlefield, create two zero two 2 blue illusion creature tokens with whenever this creature blocks a creature, that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next and tap step. Mm, okay, Mesmerizing Benthead has Hexproof, as long as you control an illusion. Maybe this will go, like I said before, in a Jace Cunning uh, kind of build. Maybe we'll see Jace the Cunning finally actually do something and uh, reach above the $2 price point he's been at forever. 
I, I just don't know. Uh, Captain Stall, that's about all. Uh, cool and limited, I guess. Biogenic Ooze, it's a five drop, $7.93. This, a lot of people are very excited about. I'm excited for it as well. It is not a legendary, which is pretty cool also. When Biogenic Ooze enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 green ooze creature token. At the beginning of your end step, put a plus one plus one counter on each ooze you control. Holy Lord of the Ooze. And for four, create a 2-2 green ooze creature token. That, that, that last ability there allows it to synergize pretty nicely with Vanifar, which we will discuss Vanifar in just a moment here. But yeah, there's been a lot of hype around this card, and the artwork on it's really neat too. I'm excited. Seraph of the Scales, $7.95. Ah, oh, man. I expect this one to go down. Maybe. We'll see how Afterlife does. But it is a four drop flying, and if you pay one white mana, Seraph of the Scales gains Vigilance until end of turn. For one black, Seraph of the Scales gains Death Touch until end of turn. And it's got the Afterlife 2, which isn't too bad. The problem is it's on a three body. This thing's just easy to remove. And in my opinion, they could have gave it Death Touch and Vigilance, to begin with, and the card might be around 10 bucks. Am I crazy for thinking that way? Do you guys think it should have came with Vigilance and Death Touch already on it? Why are we paying for that? I, I, I just don't know about this card. I do like the artwork. I, I like a white black angel all day. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think on this one. Scargon Hellkite. I expect this price to drop. It is a five drop, and uh, the price will drop. Dragon Riot again with flying for four. Scargan Hellkite deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets. Activates ability only if Scargan Hellkite has a plus one plus one counter on it. So the downside is it's cool it has haste. I like that. But the downside that you have to have a plus one plus one counter on it to use that ability. I mean, you're going to have to have it enter with a plus one plus one counter on it or give it a plus one plus one counter from the other 30 cards in the set that allow you to do so. So I guess that's not too terrible. But it's kind of outside its colors, though, somewhat. Uh, for the plus one, plus one counters, that's more Simic-based. Or at least Simic's going to win the race in that one. It definitely feels more like a rare. I don't really feel this one. It feels all that mythic-y. Uh, and it's not Glorybringer. It, it's just not. But who knows? Maybe uh, maybe this thing will surprise us. Hydroid Crisis. Hydroid. This thing was, I think it was at like three or four bucks when it was first announced. And uh, also keep in mind, these prices can change. Uh, overnight, even tomorrow. I mean, this is currently what they're going for um, eBay and TCG Player, the medium there. So uh, expect it. And I found TCG Player was cheaper this time around as well. Something I, I wanted to note. Um, in about 90% of the cases, I found cards cheaper on TCG Player than eBay. That has not happened in forever. So I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, when you cast this spell, you gain half X life and draw half X cards round down each time. Well, that just screams Simic for you. Flying and Trample, phenomenal. Uh, when this thing hits, I mean, it's 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 going to create some, some chaos. If it, had, if it had haste, oh my god. It doesn't even need haste, though. If you're running Simic Ascendancy, which that's the card if you have 20 plus one plus one counters, you win the game. So, I mean, you pump and dump, you know, a bunch of mana into this thing, ramp up, and, and then you have your Simic Ascendancy already out. You can make this thing a 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8, whatever the case may be. And I'm sure you're already running a bunch of other cards with plus some, plus some counters on them. Wow. Game over. You just This thing just hits the battlefield and you win the game. And X is really unique because you can just, well, I need seven more to win the game. I'll just pay seven for X. Game over. Really cool card. Price point seems pretty respectable right now at $9.15. I, I can't tell you if it would go up or down. I'm not sure. Orzov Usurper, $10.65. The three drop planeswalkers have returned. For one, or plus one. Exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard you gain to life if it, at least one creature card was exiled this way. Then the minus one exile target now permanent with converted mana cost one or less. And then minus five, Urzabur deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards that player owns in exile and you gain that much life. Yeah, definitely queen of the sideboards and detest ver graveyards. Yeah, that's really gonna see where you're going to find Kaya hanging out. I mean, I don't see how she's going to be main boarded all that often. Although, exiling up to two, yeah, it's just, it's graveyard hate at its finest. I mean, you really got to make a specific deck around this card if you're going to do anything, but it depends on what your opponent's playing. Exile target down that permanent, convert a mana cost one or less. 
Maybe there's some some awesome ways you benefit from exiling your own permanents and then bringing them back onto the battlefield. But then again, it's only a one uh, converted mana cost. That's I don't know. It just seems kind of janky. Uh, I don't ten dollars sixty five cents. It's kind of hard to say. I expect it to go down. But then again, a, there's quite a few cards, planeswalker cards that are sideboarded, and they retain a pretty high price point. So. It's anyone's guess on this one as well, but 1065 respectable for the time being. Davin Grand Arbiter, $13.87. I think this one's going to go down. Plus one, it's only a turn whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player or put a loyalty counter on Davin. Minus one, create a 1-1 one, one color of the stop to artifact creature token with flying, you gain one life. And the minus seven, it's, it's cool that it's not just let's draw a bunch of cards. It's actually let's look at the top ten cards of your library and then put three of them into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. If this thing had in that same text for its ultimate that you're able to play one of those cards, this thing would shoot up in price like crazy. But it's not a kill kind of Planeswalker where a lot of these Planeswalkers end the game when they ultimate. This thing doesn't necessarily end the game. I mean, unless you, you grab the right combination of tricks in, uh, in your 10 cards and uh, you're able to cast them that turn, I, I suppose. But I, I don't know. I just I don't see it yet. But I, I see that it has a lot of potential. But right now, I, I think we're going to need something else to come along in uh, an upcoming set, not in Ravnica Allegiance, for this thing really to, to go above like 12 13 bucks. Uh, I was thinking something silly like Divine Visitation Control for the Timmies out there. That could be fun. And maybe an unblockable deck. At end of turn, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a loyalty counter on it. So possibly in some kind of build like that, uh, we're going to see where this thing fits in soon enough. We've arrived at the Buy a Box promo. Really, really neat card. Love the artwork on this one. The Haunt of Hightower, six drop. Legendary creature vampire. I got to admit, when I first reviewed this card, I didn't think too highly of it. Mainly because of that three toughness. It's a huge drawback, and this thing's six to bring out. I was just like, eh. But you know what? It does have flying and lifelink and some nasty abilities. Uh, whenever the Haunt of Hightower attacks, defending player discards a card. Whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Haunt of Hightower. So just think about some kind of discard build, you know, some kind of mill deck even. It, it says from anywhere. I don't know about Commander, how, how much people are going to want to invest in this. 1485, it seems respectful right now. I do think it's going to go down, though. But this thing can become really huge. And again, that three toughness, though, I, I'm just not feeling it, man. I'm really not feeling it, but it's a very, very cool card, and uh, I'm excited to see what all it's capable of. Domri Chaos Bringer, probably the best Planeswalker in Ravnica Allegiance. It's a four drop, which is very respectful, and it comes in with five loyalty counters. That's huge. It's a uh, plus one, you add uh, red or green. If that mana is spent on a creature spell, it gains Riot, which is pretty cool. Plus one, plus one, or Haste. And then minus three is really nice. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal up to two creature cards from among them, put them in your hand, put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. That's pretty powerful. Uh, it's minus eight. You get an emblem with at the beginning of each end step. No one cares. You're creating a 4-4 red and green beast creature token. I guess it's not terrible because it's at the beginning of each end step. So I guess that makes up for a little bit. I think the first time I read this card, I was a little thrown off. I'm like, it's a 4-4, and it only happens once per like rotation or turn, you know? But it's on each each player's turn, so it's not bad. I think it could be fun in Commander, too. I mean, just think about that. Every single turn, another 4-4 is popping out. That's nuts, man. Uh, 1688, it should probably stay around that price point. Um, and if Gruel becomes a, a huge threat, which I'm really hoping it is, I'm going to make some nasty decks out of it. Uh, then yeah, this thing might go up in price, but I think it's comfortable between like 12 and 16 bucks for now. Spawn of Mayhem, $17. Four drop demon. Awesome demon. I expect this card to be more, more pricey than our Doom Whisperer. Doom Whisperer had hung out around $22, $23 for like the first month of Guilds of Ravnica. And now it's down to about eleven dollars. Spawn of Mayhem's at seventeen. I can see this thing going up in value. Honestly, the Spectacle Three. It's got flying. It's trample. And at the beginning of your upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals one damage to each player. Then, if you have ten or less life, put a plus one plus one counter on Spawn of Mayhem. So definitely going to be huge in your uh, 
in a drain decks. Powerful by itself. It really doesn't need too much help to go with it, but it really aids other spectacles because you're dealing that one damage. So your other spectacle cards can go off. So in your Rakdos, this would be a great fit. Uh, also, maybe a Demon Tribal deck. Who knows? And it's great for Curve. You got Doom Whisper at five. You got Spawn of Mayhem at four or maybe three. Uh, I, I expect to definitely see a lot of play. Angel of Grace, $17, 44 cents. It's an angel. Flash and Flying, which is huge already. And it's a 5-4, which I like. Only downside is there are a couple cards that can take it out at that four life, uh, four toughness. But that's all right. Everything's got a weakness. When Angel of Grace enters the battlefield until end of turn, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. And then for six, exile Angel of Grace from your graveyard. Your life total becomes ten. It's a 5-4. It's a great finisher. Uh, it's a great way to stall the game, gain an edge back on your opponent, and come in and win the match. Uh, definitely going to be big in a gain drain build. I'm, I'm so pumped. Finally, gain and drain is, is here. So for this Angel of Grace to come out, a competitive gain drain Orzov deck, I would love, I would love to, to build that. That's going to be a lot of fun. 1744. I expect this card to go down, though. Prime Speaker Vanifar. Really, really cool card. This card is probably one of the best cards printed in a, in a while, in my opinion. Elf Ooze Wizard. It's Birthing Pod with a body. Commander is going to love this. I think Commander alone is going to have this price point high. Uh, I expect it to go up in price. We're going to see what it does in Standard. We're also going to see what it does in Commander. Man, very powerful. Four to bring out and tap it. Sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one plus a sacrifice creature with converted mana cost. Put that card on the battlefield and shuffle your library. Activate ability on time and cast a sorcery. And it has a four body. This card's phenomenal. There's already a turn one combo out there. There's turn two combos on it. Uh, it's I have one of the turn wins on my channel. If you go back maybe like six, seven videos, you'll see it. There's just endless synergy and combos with it. This card's going to be nuts. I, I can expect it maybe 25 30 bucks down the road. Uh, but let's not get crazy. All right, that about wraps things up. Ravnica Allegiance is right around the corner. Make sure you guys stick around over the next couple days because we're going to be cracking open booster boxes and pre-release kits of new Ravnica Allegiance. It's going to be a lot of fun. Probably some giveaways as well during those videos. So make sure you stay tuned. Thank you very much. Have a good day.